Hello everyone, Ben here and welcome back to Race Room where we've got a 15 minute ranked race in the rookie servers uh, in the silhouette class at Suzuka and we are underway and we've got a flying start, we're straight past Woodcote just up ahead of us and we're up into 8th place, we had a decent enough qualifying in 9th, we've got a very big grid of cars here, around 29-30 cars make the start of the race and so it's always going to be just about navigating this first lap uh, without too many incidents and it looks as though most cars have gotten through T1 and T2 pretty well unscathed which given this is a rookie server uh, is no mean feat um, so pretty happy with that we're just going to try and consolidate eighth place here as we come through the S's trying to get the car turned in on cold tyres on this opening lap and just keeping an eye out for what's going on up ahead of us on track uh, we're coming now around the left hander, the Degners uh, 1 and 2 are coming up, we're going to take a little look down the inside here but we can't really pass into the Degners so I was just really showing to the inside there to see if I couldn't force a mistake from Palmer uh, up ahead but he was wise to that, he kept the car uh, nice and stable and we just had to back out of it. Into the hairpin now, then we get late on the brakes, just about avoid tapping Palmer from uh, behind. But up ahead there is an incident and Burgon has gone round and that is him uh, out of contention in the top five or six of this race. He'll be really disappointed with that. We'll take a little look back in a while to see if he was tapped around or whether he just lost it as he accelerated out of the corner. Into Spoon then for the first time, really tricky left-hander here, trying to get the car hooked up and on uh, the right line to power out down the back straight. We just about manage it, uh, but to be honest with you, that was a struggle all the way through the race uh, in these cars. We didn't have a great line um, through Spoon. Uh, pretty well throughout this race into the very fast left hander here then we just about keep the car uh, off that curb to the right hand side we get a better run out of it in fact then Palmer up ahead but we're not going to be close enough to make a move into the final chicane so we come around now tucked nicely underneath his rear wing onto the start finish straight for the first time and a pretty good first lap up into seventh place it's fair to say that the leaders of this race Henderson Morrison uh, in particular uh, are going to be far off in the distance from us here we don't really have the pace to challenge them uh, unless they are going to make some significant mistakes and drop back in the field we're a good second second and a half down from their quickest pace if qualifying and practice was anything to go by but we could look to get a top five finish here and that's that's kind of my aim going into this race we're into lap two following through the S's there's really no overtaking opportunities here and we're getting held up by Palmer we're quicker through this sector and if you look in my rear view mirror you can see behind me uh, that there's two cars closing in pretty fast uh, Josvik and Ayala uh, so I'm now coming under pressure from behind and I'm conscious if I can on this lap I need to try and get past Palmer otherwise I'm going to come under pressure from behind and I might end up losing a spot not gaining one uh, so we come underneath the bridge then on the figure of eight and I'm not probably going to be close enough to try and make a move into the hairpin so again I'm just gonna have to duck in behind try and prioritize getting a better exit here uh, as again the two cars behind close right in on us uh, we're gonna come around the right hander it's not looking like we're gonna get close enough either uh, to try and go into spoon side by side always a risky endeavor at the best of times uh, but again I'm just gonna have to follow him around he's slightly wide as he going in and we get a little bit of a glitch there but look at the um, pop-out screen in the top right hand corner there's gonna be an incident just up ahead of us as one car goes around he makes contact with Palmer just up ahead of us that's gonna give us the chance to go down the left hand side we've got a much better drive down the back straight and we can make the position up into fifth place so we've gained two spots there and we're now just going to look to hang on into uh, the chicane as we just about uh, avoid being tapped from behind there uh, through the left hander they're going side by side behind us so it looks as if Josvik is going to get ahead uh, as well and up into sixth place as we come across uh, the start finish line uh, for the end of lap two about a third of the way into this race 
and we were very fortunate not to get collected in that accident there. Uh, really unlucky for Palmer um, to get caught up in it. But let's take this moment of breathing space to just take a little look back at the start and just see if it was really a clean getaway. Look at how many cars are on this grid. Uh, three, four wide going into T1. There are multiple lines through the corners uh, and amazingly there isn't more carnage behind us. There is just one car there going around in the very back of shot but by and large, at least at this stage, everybody survived uh, which is a bit of a novelty um, at this circuit in these servers. We're coming up the hill now then through the S's and you can see there is no real way past here so everybody's just holding station for the time being. You run a risk if you go offline uh, and losing time and speed rather than gaining positions. You'll see we just take a little look to the inside here as we head into Degna 1 but we think better of it and we just took him back behind. Again quite impressed that nobody so far has ran wide into the Degnas. If you fast forward just a little bit, we now flick to um, the car up ahead who ended up losing it on the exit of the hairpin. And this then is a pretty good contender for worst rejoin uh, of the year. He has one attempt at it, punts a couple of people. He's then going to reverse back across the track again, right into traffic, nearly gets flipped over. He collects four cars there, I think, all in all, who really had nowhere to go. And then he rejoins and is on his way. Uh, that was all happening behind us. As we then came around on the next lap, this is the incident which saw the car spinning up ahead of us and then Palmer just not able to get out of the way of the stricken car. Taps him and that gives us the chance we need to get past. And then just a little later as we come now down into the chicane, uh, Josvik behind us also makes the move on Palmer around the outside in the chicane. He's got the outside line for part one of the corner, but that gives him the inside and he's able to muscle past and took him behind us in sixth place. We're rejoining then a couple of laps later. We're just about half distance uh, of the race uh, and Josvik has, has, has caught back up to our rear wing. We had a little bit of a space uh, back to him, but unfortunately we weren't able to hold that. We're just slightly ragged as we come uh, around the left-hander there. And that's my, maybe going to give him just a little bit of a temptation into the Degners. Thankfully, he thinks better of it. We carry more speed than him, actually. Um, pretty much throughout this race into this set of corners. We're a little bit wide on exit, uh, but he can't capitalise on that. Uh, so we're just now trying to hold fifth place. It looks as if the drivers in first through fourth are going to be just a little bit too far up the road. It's taken us too long uh, to get up into fifth place. And even though we're lapping at a similar, play, uh, similar pace um, to the car directly ahead, we're not really going to be able to make up that gap unless something quite dramatic happens uh, up uh, up ahead. For the time being, I'm just focused on holding fifth place because we're coming under all sorts of pressure here. Again, we're just a bit greedy on the power and it means that we're offline coming onto the back straight and this is potentially going to give um, Josvik the run that he needs uh, down uh, to get alongside us towards the end of this lap and you can see he is making that move to the left hand side of us uh, we're going to be going side by side here through the very quick left hander not really where you want to be and he has got that move done as we come down into the chicane i can't hold it on the inside we would definitely have made contact there and actually we pick up a small slow down penalty uh, for just taking a little bit too much curb into the chicane that is going to put us under pressure here because I want to get into a slipstream. I'm, I'm really tempted to have a go straight back into T1 because we're closing in here, but I need to clear that slowdown penalty. And at Suzuka, it's really difficult to do that through the S's. You have to sort of take that penalty down the straight. So I get off the gas and I forfeit that opportunity to try and get back alongside. We get a better exit as we end head into the S's, but there really is going to be no way past here, even if we're quicker through this section. Uh, of the racetrack. Uh, we're just trying to find our line, not get too distracted uh, by the car overhead uh, and recompose ourselves. It's a shame we weren't able to hold that place, but we've still got a good five minutes left of this race, a good third of race distance still to go. And I'm confident that there isn't too much difference between our ultimate pace uh, and that there will be opportunities to come to get back alongside and hopefully reclaim that fifth 
place. Uh, we're coming through Degna 2 there and he's got a poor run so we are closing right in on him now. We might, just might, have an opportunity to get down the inside into the hairpin. We take a little look but we're just, we don't, we don't have the difference in braking uh, in order to do it. We do get a better exit though um, so we've maintained that very very um, close uh, gap to him as we come around the right hander and up towards spoon once again i'm going to try and show to the inside again but it's not worth taking a big dive bomb into this corner so we think better of it he gets up on the curbs and he's struggling through the exit of this corner you can see the car sliding but we're struggling too and i couldn't get the gas down and that ultimately means uh, we're not going to be close enough uh, in all likelihood heading into the chicane at the end of this lap. We are just about getting a distant tow from him as we come into the left-hander here. We just get up on the curb slightly. He runs slightly wide, so we are going to carry a bit more speed through, but not close enough. Uh, as we head into the chicane again he's run slightly deep though so we should get a better exit and we do get a much better exit so we're going to be right underneath his rear wing as we come onto the start finish straight then we're going to try and just hold in his slipstream and catapult around the outside when the time is right we're closing right up you could barely get a bit of paper between us we come to the outside try and hold it round there but he gets on the brakes later than we do fair play to him he holds a very good line through the corner, keeps it nice and controlled, nice and hooked up. We run slightly wide on exit, and actually he ended up taking that corner better than we did and holding the position. Fair play to him, good racing. I sniffed half an opportunity there, but we just couldn't make it work. Let's take a little look back then at the move that cost us fifth position. We're coming into Spoon here. You can see he's been all over our rear wing uh, for the best part of a lap and a bit at this point. He gets a better exit than we do from the corner. We're really struggling to get the power down. And so at this point, we're really not able to do too much about it. I could have shown to the inside, but that would have meant we had a really pinched uh, a pinched apex uh, through the fast left hander. I didn't want to do that. We go side by side. I try to hold it around the outside. But unfortunately, at this point, the move is done. Uh, I don't fancy like uh, collecting him into the chicane, so I think better of that. And we come round to end the lap in sixth place. Uh, we're going to try and get underneath his rear wing uh, and make a move straight back into T1. But unfortunately, uh, we just had to serve that slowdown penalty and we weren't able to do it. We've gone then right to the end of the race here. We've got about a lap and a half left of... Um, of the race we have maintained uh, a really close gap to him up ahead but we haven't had the opportunity to get past as you can see we're really attacking now and going aggressively into Degna 1 and the Degna 2 we've got nowhere to go because he's parked the car on the apex we were much quicker than him through the first half of the lap unfortunately he was generally quicker than we were through the second half of the lap and it's really in that second half of the lap that you can line up an overtaking maneuver either into the uh, chicane at the end of the lap or at the beginning of the very next lap we never really had that opportunity up until this point of the race uh, we were closing on in on him all the way through the s's and into the degnas but then losing time through this corner, Spoon, and then down into the back straight. And as you can see, again, I'm really struggling to get on the pace and carry more speed through the corner than he is. And he's pulled away again, uh, which is going to put us in a really difficult spot heading into the last lap. The other thing to look out for is Woodcote in seventh place. So he started ahead of us on the grid, but he got a poor start. And I think he got collected in some sort of incident because he dropped right the way down the pack as we run wide. Uh, thankfully, don't pick up a time penalty there and we're able to keep control of the car. But Woodcote has recovered. So he's now joining this battle for fifth place. He's less than a second behind us now. We've then got a much bigger gap back to Redfern. So it's going to be a three-way battle between myself Woodcote and Joswick uh, for 5th, 6th and 7th place as we head into this final lap of the race. We've got now no real opportunity to pressure Joswick into the first set of corners so we're just going to try and hook to the apex and hopefully close in through this next section of the lap and if I can just get Spoon right then there'll be a chance into the final corner of the race. But I mustn't make any mistakes because now I know I've got a pressure uh, from behind in the shape of woodcut. It looks as though the front three are well clear, uh, or the front four, sorry, are well clear. Um, there's a big 13, 14 second gap 
uh, there to fourth place. Uh, we're coming around the left-hander then into the Degners and we're not really close enough, are we? No, we, we do get through the corners faster uh, than the driver up ahead. And we are positioning ourselves reasonably well here, but look at this, up in the pop-out screen in the top right-hand corner, that's Sentinac, and he's running slowly just up ahead of us, and it looks as if he might have ran out of fuel. Extraordinarily, we are now gonna pass him on our right-hand side, and we're gonna hop up into fifth place did not see that coming at all what a way for the race to end for him having ran comfortably in the top four all race long he's now basically going to dnf uh, i don't think he'll make the finish line uh with uh, pulling up there on the right hand side but we're into the crucial part then of this final lap and we're struggling again and look at woodcourt behind us you can see he's made the move to the inside he's got the better exit on us and we're down into sixth place we're running side by side but he's got the exit speed we are in the end gonna have to tuck in just behind him as we come now for the final time into the high speed left hander we make a little look to the inside but we're gonna not be able to carry that speed through the corner he runs wide but he's basically got the move done so having benefited from Sentinac retiring we've dropped straight back into sixth place as a charging woodcut uh, made his way through he might even have the pace on Josvik up ahead, but it doesn't look as if he's going to make that move. Uh, just going to run out of time as we come home in fourth, fifth, and ourselves in sixth place. What a race. Really, really enjoyable. Didn't expect it to be so intense all race long. Really clean racing. Uh, for us up towards the front of the grid very very enjoyable here's then that final piece of action from the replay footage you can see us coming into spoon we're already under big pressure in fairness from woodcut i think we just have to concede that he had better pace than us if i'd been able to manage this corner better i think we'd have kept him behind us um, but unfortunately this was our weak part of the circuit all race long and it compromised us and the kind of finish we could get i think if we if we nailed that better throughout the race and clearly a fourth place finish was on as it turns out we're going to have to settle for sixth place uh, we would just were not able to respond uh, in this final chicane we weren't close enough uh, and so had to settle for the top six but as i say really enjoyable proof once again that although it can get pretty messy in the midfield on these rookie servers uh, it is possible to have a really good race up front uh, and that's exactly what we've done very very enjoyable uh, as we there see us crossing the finish line confirmation then that henderson won the race a two minutes seven second fastest lap is really good pace around here and there's the full classified results i hope you've enjoyed the race if you have leave a like subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time